friends and welcome back to Sewing from Scratch. I am Kate and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way. In today's video I am sharing my entire projector setup, what projector I have, all the things that go with it, and why I chose this projector. So if you're looking at getting a projector and you're not sure which one to get, stick around and maybe this will give you some insight into that. my original or my first projector video where I talk about the things I don't like about using projectors. Some of this information will be repeat but some of it is new so I will link that down below for anybody who hasn't watched it because there are things that I don't think are great about projectors. That all being said let's get into what my setup is. If you're not familiar with projectors for sewing it basically replaces paper patterns. That's the long and short of it. I'm going to leave it at that. We take an image from the computer, we put it to the projector, it projects down onto our fabric, we cut it out, we sew it. It's That's essentially what happens. Uh, yes, there's more into it, but we're not going to get into all that today. That is why you would want a projector for sewing and that is what it is used for. Now let's continue on. So the projector I have, I purchased on Amazon and it is called the Ape Man 2021 Upgraded 5000L 1080p HD projector, I think. <laughs> it is a mini projector. The 1080p is actually not the native resolution, it is the supported resolution, which I didn't know. I thought it was the native resolution because I couldn't actually find that anywhere when I was or didn't know enough to find that when I was purchasing. The listing on Amazon is actually no longer there so I can't find out more about it from Amazon like to go to like my past orders and stuff like that. Actually no 8-man projectors are on Amazon as of the filming of this video but it is equivalent to the LC350 and this is kind of their their lowest model and it's a great budget-friendly model when I bought mine, it was hundred listed at $109.99 Canadian dollars on Amazon. And then they had a $30 coupon, which of course I used. And then my mount was $14.99 Canadian. So after all that, what was charged to my credit card after the coupon and everything like that was $94.98. So for under $100, I have a projector set up. I did also have to buy an extra HDMI cord that was long enough because we we routed it through the ceiling and down the wall and everything like that. So I will show you that. I think my setup is pretty unique because I do have everything, like I have it plugged in and I have it wired, hardwired in and hardwired? Yeah, I guess. The HDMI cord goes right to my computer through the wall. Like I don't have cords hanging around because that was a big deal to me. I do not like that. I don't love the way it looks as it is, but that's the way it has to be. So. I think my setup is maybe a little bit unique in that fact that I don't just have things hanging all over the place and like it's all nice and hidden. I have mine mounted to my ceiling but you can also mount to the wall. Now we're going to talk about the mount in a little bit but let me just finish up with the actual projector. So this projector I mentioned in the last video that it's not very bright and then after like getting some feedback from more experienced people I learned that it's actually that's just the way it is. So I don't know some people say tell me that it's a brighter one or like it's it's one of the more brighter ones by if you go by lumens which apparently doesn't mean anything according to other people and that it's not bright. I don't know I don't find it that bright when I'm working in the daylight but I mean I have two big windows or a big window there and a half light in our door there plus I have light coming in from this side of the room so it is quite bright in here. At night I get a much better picture but obviously that's because of contrast so other people have said just bump up the contrast and that's what's more important for us to be able to see sewing patterns. I mean that makes sense also because when I have it projecting on lighter colored fabric or white which I will show you here it is much clearer than if I'm projecting on black obviously like black on black isn't ideal right? Now why did I go with this projector? Well there's basically there's two things you need to factor in when you're looking to purchase a projector. You need to factor in the distance from your surface to the ceiling and in my case that was 67 inches. 
And then you also need to factor in where, where you want it mounted. So maybe it's not the ceiling, maybe it's the wall, wherever. You need to factor in whatever that distance is and how you want it mounted. Not all projectors can be mounted on the ceiling if you don't have enough height, because there is there is a minimum that you need to project that. Then you need to go with an ultra short distance, I think, it, or ultra short throw projector. I will link below the Facebook group for project sewing projectors. It is, I mean, I don't know how anybody gets a sewing projector and gets set up without that group. It is like, it is 100% necessary in my opinion. But they talk about the differences between the ultra short throw and the ceiling mounted ones or the mini projectors, whatever you want to call it. So basically the ultra short throw is like, you're, you're projecting it pretty much right beside your fabric or maybe like a little bit elevated. I can't really speak to those because I haven't used them. I'm just gonna again continue talking about the one that I have. I wanted my mount to be close to the ceiling. So the mount I purchased from Amazon is, again, it was $14.99, it was not expensive. It swivels 90 degrees so that I can have the projector mounted sideways, projecting straight down onto my surface. It is a relatively short mount, which is exactly what I wanted, and it gives me a distance from my lens to my table of 59 inches. With that distance and this projector, I get a projected area of 26 inches by 42 inches. If your distance is more, your picture is going to be bigger. If your distance is shorter, your picture is going to be smaller. So again, I talked about building a custom table that's going to be more at my waist level. Currently, I'm at like dining table height. That is going to make my image smaller, but that's okay because right now it's bigger than my cutting mat, so it's fine. So because I wanted it mounted on the ceiling, close to the ceiling, and I had enough distance for it to go that high or to be on the ceiling, and I was thinking forward knowing I want to build a specific table in the future, that limited my options down to, well it didn't limit them, it made me realize I can go with a mini projector mounted on the ceiling, so then I started looking at those. And after that, it pretty much comes down to budget. I would say get the most expensive one or the most high quality one that you are willing to pay for. For me, I wanted to spend like nothing. So I, this is the one I got. It is basically the budget friendly one. I did look in the projector group just to make sure that the reviews were good on it and they were. So that's what we went with. Now that I know a little bit more, I think I would have invested in a better mount. I have not had problems with this one, but I have heard several people say that theirs comes loose and then their um, their image is, is not square anymore. Again, I haven't had that issue. I am like, there's nothing, no floor above our, this room, well, our whole house is only one level. I'm, I'm trying to say that nobody walks above it. So, and there's not really, like there's doors, but there's not really anything jiggling the ceiling around it. So I think that's what helps to keep it in place. I do check frequently, cause sometimes I'm like, oh, that doesn't look right. But the squares all check out and everything like that. So I think this mount is okay if you don't, if you're not in a basement or somewhere where there's people walking above you or doors closing a lot and that kind of thing. But the mount that I would go with if I was to do this again is the basic niche mount and it's it just looks a lot neater. It is more expensive and you have to pay shipping especially here in Canada and all that but I think it would have been a good investment. Okay, so this projector, getting it set up, calibrating it, all of the things was very, very simple. The only frustrating thing I had was actually a setting on my computer when you're switching to two screens. I, something was wonky there and I just had to go in. I had to Google how to fix it and then I did it. It was so easy once I knew what I was doing. This is my best mama ever. Keep that all in the video, whatever I say in the video. Okay. So no problems with getting it set up and calibrating it. I would happily take it down if we wanted to have like a movie night outside or something and use it for that. I would have no problem resetting it and calibrating it and yada, yada, yada. And she's my snuggle. And the snuggle buddy. This projector is not, um, not wireless, I guess is the word. I have, again, I have it hardwired with an HDMI cord through the ceiling, through the wall, to my computer. We were able to do that quite easily. We, my husband, 
he had to go in the attic, but it, it all got done. And, and it's, I love that because I don't have to worry about like connections and all that kind of thing. Now this projector comes with a remote control. I would say that is necessary if you are doing this for sewing, especially if you have it up on the ceiling. I think probably most of them do come with a remote, but just make sure, okay? Because it's really important. I wouldn't want to be climbing up there every time I have to do something. So I just have the little remote. Works fantastic. So I think that is all I have to say about the setup of my projector. One thing I do find with this specific projector is the, and probably others, is the fan is quite loud. So I can't like, I don't know, it is loud. I will, I'll run it and show you. So I do, like, I mean, I use it when my kids are sleeping and that's fine. Their rooms are right there, but they are totally fine with all of the sewing things anyway, so that's fine. But if there was some reason you wouldn't want it to be loud, then you might wanna look into something that's quieter. But at the same time, I do want that fan to be running because I don't want it to overheat when I'm using it for a while. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you're shopping for a projector or a new projector or a different projector, I like this one as a budget-friendly option. So far there's been no need for me to like want to upgrade, but I've only been using it for a couple months now, two and a half, three months kind of thing. And yeah, I've been really loving it. There hasn't really been a learning curve too much. I've started learning Inkscape and, and yeah, we'll get into that. But I just wanted to get this up here and, and share that with you in case you're looking or maybe thinking about for Christmas or something like that. So I, again, hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm not an expert, but I can definitely direct you to the Facebook group that is, again, just like you need it. You need the Facebook group if you're looking at getting a projector. I was lurking in there for a long time before I finally decided to buy one. Well, I knew I was buying one, but I, what was holding me up was I didn't know which one to get. So finally I just did it and I am so happy I did. I am happy with this model of projector and I hope to use it for years to come and I'm really loving being mostly paperless. It does save a lot of time in the actual cutting process. I wasn't sure about it, but it does. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget about Shelf Sewing September, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can see you in the next one. Bye.